Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Raphael Ray. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live or to later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, why is this? Sh um, so um, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, meditation, angel cards, hypnosis to help women who've lost get clear on their destiny. As I love to help people at crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future and take charge of their destiny. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guide to meditation or angel card or possibly something else. Um, with the wisdom of wonderful guests like today's guest, Raphael Ray, who wants to talk about how we live in an age where the term self-empowerment and inner strength are used all the time, where everything we face is meant to fly off you like water off a duck's back. What about when you can't? What about when something does make you beneath the surface? It's great to be empowered and it's brilliant to have inner courage and fire, but it's also wise and powerful soul who knows how and when to rest and the importance for asking for help. Now, Raphael is an intuitive guidance consultant who's been reading tarot for five years professionally, but longer than that in general. He's managed to grow his YouTube following to 50,000 subscribers, which is brilliant. You really should check it out and has been on a personal journey of healing. He has a fresh, frank approach to things, but always tries to bring a unique healing and warm energy to everything he does with reviews such as Raphael is a highly intuitive individual. I love his very detailed and accurate tarot and astrology readings. He so easily relates to every zodiac sign. His messages are easy to understand. I appreciate his humility and genuine way of relating to others. And really helpful, thank you. I think you're so in tune with each star sign and how you explain the tarot's meaning. So without further delay, hello, Raphael, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, Ray. Thank you so much for that uh, amazing introduction. That's really, really sweet. Of me. So, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, happy to be back. I remember it was, gosh, over a year ago now, wasn't it? The yes. last one we did. Um, yes, it was. An absolute blast then. <laughs> really grateful to be back. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And who knows what's going to happen in this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. So before we do start this conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Raphael and I want you to be part of this show and this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Raphael, why don't you tell us about yourself and what you want to talk about? Okay, so as you mentioned, I am a, what I like to call an intuitive guidance consultant. Um, and I believe that one of the reasons that I chose that term is it goes much broader than the term psychic. And I think we get a really bad rap nowadays, even though that's kind of, you know, pretty much the basis of what we do. I think we're so much more than that. And it's really uh, about sort of helping people find their own inner wisdom and taking that forward. Uh, me, myself, yes, as you mentioned, I'm a most mostly uh, YouTube based. Um, but yeah, in general, I would say I'm very much open to connecting with people to see them, uh, what they want to learn about their destinies, what they understand about themselves already and where they can take that and how they can grow and develop it. Um, today, I want to talk about self-empowerment and um, and asking for help. And I think at the moment, it's kind of the perfect time to talk about this. Uh, we're currently in lockdown, you know, across the world, everybody's facing this situation at the moment. Um, I have to say, shout out to everybody in the world that's pulling together, uh, everybody that is doing what they can to support one another, to really lift each other up. It's been so amazing to see people do that for one another. Uh, and it's definitely restored my faith in humanity. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it has for you as well. Um, so, yeah, self-empowerment. We hear about this a lot nowadays. And I think it's brilliant, right? It's great to be self-empowered. It's brilliant. And it's a, a really great expression of your personal power to feel like you can stand in it, to feel like you, you can face anything. And ultimately, to know who you are, to be strong and confident in your own abilities. Um, but one of the things that I'm kind of, I think everybody's noticed is now in this day and age, we hear that term thrown about so much, you know, inner courage, inner fire. Uh, and it's like, 
we've got all of this, you know, slogans and stuff, and it's talking about your self empowerment, um, which is great. It's a really important tool uh, to help you with your own personal fulfillment. But what happens if it's forced? You know, and I kind of feel like nowadays we are kind of forced to be self empowered. We've got to be more of this. Like for guys, it's you know, if you're not hitting beast mode, you're not doing anything that's worth it. And for women, if you're not slaying, then you know you're, yeah. you're not showing up. Um, well, I think I kind of want to break down some of that one because it presents a really um, a really superficial experience of what so self-empowerment is actually about it goes much deeper than that and sometimes it's a really subtle thing sometimes those things are uh, you know they happen at a deeper level or um in a more gentle way as well you know sometimes the the most powerful that you can be is the most gentle that you can be is the most vulnerable that you can be it's not all about being in your face or being ostentatious sometimes that silent dignity or that silent courage that you have speaks volumes you know um i think one of the other things is as well it's about giving yourself permission uh, to be okay with not having all of the answers to not have it in it all figured out uh, you know to yeah toxic positivity as someone says they're not helpful at all absolutely yeah. and what happens when that positivity that toxic positivity or that superficial positivity fails what happens when it just doesn't do the job and one of the things that i talked about at the beginning of this year we're in 2020 which is in terms of its numerology is a four year uh, this is all about hard work focus dedication and the tagline that i've been using from before this is like this year even started was if it doesn't do what it says on the tin it's not worth your time and it's such an old cliche saying yeah. right? we've all heard this when we were younger and it's like oh who says that anyway <laughs> and here i am like on the other side of 30 and it's like i'm using that same line <laughs> it shows you've got to that age it shows you've got to an adult absolutely right and this whole idea that it goes beyond that it goes deeper than that um for me is really important i want to help people understand that it's brilliant self-empowerment is a tool it's a tool to help you find your fulfillment absolutely inner courage inner fire are really important tools for you to use but um if you're using them to mask something how you really feel that's not doing you any good. It's not helping you or assisting you in any way. And I, th and I think we do that um, quite a lot, really, don't we? We, we try and mask stuff um, so that people don't actually see what's going on inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That kind of reminds me of... Um, you know, you see people, they go out, they look absolutely polished, prepped and preened. They look brilliant. And, you know, you just want to say to them, like, is everything OK? Because in your smile, it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. Because in readings at the moment, um, obviously, we're all in lockdown. Right. So suddenly people care less about how they look and they care more about how they feel. They care more about being present and about being focused. Um, and it's interesting. One of the first things that people will say to me, especially women, is you'll have to excuse the state of me. It's like we're in lockdown. Right? Yeah, my hair. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that, it doesn't even matter. And I think if anything, that kind of shows us how out of whack it's all got a little bit, right? Strength in facing acceptance of your vulnerability. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. And that's kind of where this is going and where I want to take it. Um, so the thing is as well with self-care, I've got tons of notes here as well. Um, sometimes it looks like healthy boundaries sometimes it, it really does look like being able to say no when you mean no and sometimes it looks like being able to say yes when you mean yes and being okay with those answers sometimes it really is those subtle ways that we show up for ourselves that show that we are self-empowered um, that look like that empowerment is coming from a place of true authenticity and a place of true strength you know not just from the surface or how we look or how we show up um yeah another thing i've put here as well sometimes it's the silent strength that it takes just to get up and get through your day 
you know, just being okay with that, not having to put any whistles and bells on it, not having to be anything or do anything to, to please anybody, but just showing up as you truly are, um, which is, you know, so <laughs> high <hi>, retails. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, it, it's it's like, you know, if we were to to look at me, you know, I was, I was quite honest in the room. Um, my membership site, the other, or, um, the, the, the Facebook group for my membership site, you know, um, someone had uh, asked if I could do a uh, create a guided meditation for them, and it's like I I kind of like had, had a little dip, and then it's like when I, I put in there, look, I'm I'm a little bit down at the moment. I I can't, you know, I'm I can't do it yet, but I'll do it when I when I come back up again you know and for me that was that was quite a brave thing to do you know admit um yeah i'm a little bit down at the moment but i'll get i'll get i'll get there yeah awesome absolutely love that um and that you know that moment of being able to be that vulnerable to say you know what i'm not in that place at the moment but when i am i'll get straight back to it and that is exactly what we're talking about you know and if you'd have pushed past that it would have been forced, you know, it would have been that kind of energy of, right, okay, I'm doing this because I feel like I have to. Uh, I love the honesty. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, awesome. right, yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank, 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 thank you for that, Carlicia. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing that I want to talk about as well. So we're in lockdown and I have one of the big things for me, I've been saying to everyone, don't waste this time, do something with it, pick up your pen, pick up your paintbrush, like whatever it is that you do, like get on it, put your music on, dance around the house like a crazy person, like whatever it is. And I really think those things are a worthy use of our time. One thing that I have noticed as a thread though, is it's kind of like people saying, well, what are you doing? You know, if you're if if you've got this skill, why aren't you turning it into a side hustle? Or why aren't you making a, you know, why aren't you turning it into a business? And it's like, it's okay to have hobbies and things that you enjoy, and they will be just as empowering to you for the sake of sheer enjoyment. It doesn't have to be a business. And sometimes, if anything, that would sully that thing that you love so much, right? Use it as a tool. Mm to stay in that place of empowerment. You know, don't, and it's really easy because obviously at the moment with the whole thing with work and the way that things are going, we were just saying this earlier, right? But we work online. We've been living this online life <laughs> for a long time. Um, funny thing that I saw recently when, uh, and somebody said, um, uh, when you find out that your everyday existence is called <laughs> quarantine, <laughs> it's just like whoever came up with that absolutely nailed it. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you have something just as satisfying doing it for yourself 100 percent if you have a hobby if you have a skill uh, if it's painting if it's drawing if it's singing whatever it is if it's going to tap you into your creativity and you are going to enjoy it my advice is keep it as something that you enjoy that makes you feel empowered you don't have to turn it into a business it doesn't have to even make you a penny of profit it doesn't have to do anything like that as long as it's serving you from a place within yeah to, to, totally because yeah because sometimes when you turn hobbies into businesses then yeah they they don't become enjoyable anymore because you're thinking about okay i need to do this i need to do that i've got a taxman to pay i've got this and yeah and it, you just don't enjoy it anymore yeah it like takes all of the fun out of it right <laughs> okay cheers. Like chocolate cake Rafa, is a sliced grape but the whole cake would make you sit ah <laughs> Do you know why I'm laughing? Because that's so, oh, lovely. So she's such a sweetheart. That's a line from one of the videos I put out. I can't remember when, but well remembered, lovely. <laughs> she definitely watches my video. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh gosh. But but yeah, it, it is. It is. So, um, a, a slice is great, but a whole cake would um, would make you sick. Although sometimes the cake's too nice not to just yeah, do. right. <laughs> Put the cake down. <laughs> Cho chocolate cake. Oh God, I'm gone. More, more than one time, trust me. Um, so there's a few things as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, Carlisha is saying isolation has been a blessing in a way. 
I freeze through a course that's taken almost three years to get done through lack of motivation and yeah. having time to just focus on it has brought back in my enjoyment of it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. And that's really using your time, you know, using your time wisely to do something that actually makes you, and you know, that's got something to be said as well, completing things, you know, whenever you finish something, it raises your vibration because you have less energy kind of being dissipated on, I need to finish that, I've got to do that, I'll get round to that at such and such a date. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So talking next about self-empowerment and asking for help, um, and this is something that is definitely, <laughs> oh hush, you'll make me laugh. <laughs> um, this is something that we definitely, I think would, this is a good sort of place to segue into that. Um, Asking for help is sometimes the most uh, adult thing to do. Sometimes it's the wisest, most enlightened thing that you can do to say, you know what, I'm not having a good time of it. I can't do this right now or I need some support. I need somebody to assist me in how I'm thinking and how I'm feeling or what's going on with me at this moment in time. Yeah, um, and, and and that can you know that is a difficult one. You know that that is that is the most difficult one for me because I'm so self sufficient, and that um, you know that I've had to sometimes learn to ask 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 for help. Yeah, absolutely, and it's brilliant that you can say that as well. I think that's really really important for people. Um, I think very often as well. I mean, I've got written here the importance of checking in with yourself to really ask you know what am I in a good place with this and I know for me um, I've become much better at it now but I used to very much be like that like don't need anything don't need anyone I can do it all myself I'm struggling my knees are buckled under the weight and my mind is giving me all kinds of hell but I'd still be telling myself no no I'm all right I'm okay I can get through this on my own I don't need anything I don't yeah. need anyone I can get through this and that is literally the script that basically screams if you read between the lines I'm not okay I do need help and I don't know how to ask for it right now um, and I think, you know, when you get into that place, that's when you know. So something that I've come up with that I want to share with you guys and with you, Ray, I'm terrible at asking for help. And I think the spiritual community, Lisa, who reads cards as well, um, I think we are probably some of the the worst for it. Mm. We get into our minds that, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm spiritual. I'm a healer. I'm a reader. I'm a this, I'm a that. So I shouldn't be asking for help. You know, I should maybe I don't need any assistance. And, and I think actually the, the opposite is true. And I think when you really do get into that space of self-empowerment, you're able to reach out to your friends and your peers and say, you know what, I'm having trouble reading for myself at the moment. Can you give me a hand? And mm. that's the beauty of our community, right? We all kind of say, yeah, that's cool. Exactly. What is it you're stuck on? What is it that you're not seeing or you don't understand? Um, I've got three things here for you. This is the last point that I'll talk about on this. If you feel yourself in a dip, if you feel like you're having a moment with something and you're not feeling empowered and you actually don't want to put a plaster on it anymore, three A's are going to help you. The first one, acknowledgement. Acknowledge that you don't feel okay, that you are struggling with something and that it's not something that you can just put a plaster on at this moment in time. The second A is acceptance. Once you accept that that is the case, that will open up a flood well of personal love uh, from the universe, from the angels, from spirit, from your guides. As soon as you take that step uh, to, you know, once you've acknowledged it, to accept it, to just say, actually, you know what? yeah, I'm going to accept that I'm not okay and reaching out is probably the best thing for me to do, then take action on it. Acknowledgement, acceptance, action. Use those three A's and you will stay in your self-empowerment whilst asking for help, whilst reaching out to people, and that will give you everything that you need. And the beauty of it, you remain in your power and everybody that is close to you will love you even more for it because they've seen a side to you that you might not have shown them up until this point. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's absolutely true because sometimes people do sort of like think, 
you know, especially if you are the go-to person when someone, when, when you know, when your, your group of people and, um, you know, whenever when everyone's down, they go to you all the time, et cetera, um, that, that sometimes they forget that, you know, sometimes you have those down moments as, as well and that you might need help from them or from somebody else. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that's why I said, yeah, I think in our community, when you start out, especially, I was really bad for it. Whereas now I'm like, oh, no, I'll check in with someone or, you know, so and so will probably have a good word for me. And I think if anything, I'm happier and I feel more supported for it. Mm. Yeah, 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 definitely. Because there's no judgment or anything. So are you having a bad day? OK, let me see what I can do, what I can do for you. You know, because there are, at some point that person might bad down they may reach out to you and you'll go, Yeah, of course I'm gonna I'm gonna help you and give you some advice or a virtual hug or something like that. Absolutely. Awesome. So should we get into some cards? Yeah, let's get into some cards and that. Um I told you there'd be a treat today, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we start with should we start with okay let's start with the angels first and yep. then if i do um a card for what we need to know for the present and then maybe with the tarot we can evolve on that as to what people sh where they might be going possibly yeah absolutely. Something, something like that we'll we, we see what comes out so um, let's do the cards so what does everyone who's watching this need to know for their high school spent in time? Okay, we have got miracles. Expect the wondrous to emerge. Beautiful. That is such a beautiful card. You know, it's basically saying to us all now, there are miracles happening all around us all the, all the time. And to be in that state of expectation, you know, be ready for these things to happen, expect them to happen and they will happen. Um, don't, don't sort of like any, let any doubts or niggles get you down. It is a case of, okay, miracles do happen. I'm expecting them to happen. You know, if, if you look at the lockdown, what miracles have occurred, you know, all those um, creatures going back into the um, uh, the Venice canals. That's miraculous. That's never happened before. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Um, and it's it really is true. I think if you keep your mind and your vibe in that state of expecting of good things to happen to you and for you, that's what you draw in. Right. It's it's, it's you get more of what you think about. Um, so staying in that space is absolutely, mm. I love that as well. When I saw it, I was like, wow, can you imagine all this time? All, all it took was for us to get out the bloody way for a while. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 it's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got the question here. So um, what, what, what might we need to know going forward? Yeah. All right. So, as always, I'd like to bless my deck of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help us all on our paths to our highest vibrational good. And we've got the Knight of Wands, delving into your passions, being ready to move on things, being ready to, to really go after what it is that you want. Now, here's the beauty of this, right? You pulled the Miracles card. This, I mean, this in tandem, look at that. That's the process of how you make the secret work, right? Expect miracles, stay in that high vibrational energy and know that being in that energy is going to draw good things to you. Get on your horse, get moving, start making things happen and use your action and your willpower and you can but succeed. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely brilliant that, you know, the way those are, um, uh, cards, um, you know, kind of like match. Um, and Lisa says, um, I do feel these troubled times will bring a newness to humanity that is very needed. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Um, and I think we're seeing it a lot of, uh, there's a lot of community that's starting to happen, which is really, really nice. I think, especially online, um, where mm-hmm. usually you get a lot of trolls and a lot of real meanness, I think we're starting to see a lot more people band together and yeah. be a lot kinder to each other in these times, which is a really beautiful thing to see. It is, yeah. It's, it's absolutely beautiful that that, that things like that are, are, are coming through now. Um, okay, so... Why don't you pull one of the um, the other cards? Yeah, so I've got my Green Witch Tarot deck here. Let's have a look, see. So what, what do we want to look at here? Or is it just a general card? Um, I think um, as it's very earthy, um, you know, what we can do to kind of like to stay grounded and fully present as we're, as we're moving forward with everything that's going on around us. Awesome. Love that. All right, so we've got the King of Swords, right? So in terms of staying grounded, use your mind effectively. So we talked about self-empowerment. We talked about asking for help. The King of Swords, what is he? Above all else, he's cool, calm, and collected. He knows how to use his, uh, his mindset. He knows how to use all of the skills that he's got available to him. And one of the beauties of this card, he knows not to doubt himself. And that's my message to all of you out there that are watching now, that are watching at a later date. Believe and trust in your own skills. Whatever you have had the intelligence and the grit to learn up until now will carry you through. You got smarts, baby. Love them and use them. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Um, Yeah, it it, it is. We, We all know, you know, deep down, we all know what we're supposed to be doing and where we're supposed to be going, but we need to get out of our way sometimes. Yeah. Because um, we were talking about that beforehand, weren't we? You know, it, it's like we we all need we all need we all know deep down what we should be doing, where we should be going. We just need to step out of our way sometimes and let our subconscious come up and say, "Okay, this is what you should be doing." Absolutely, absolutely, it's so true, and I really do believe that we all know deep down what we should be doing, where we should be going, and we know what we're aligned with. I think sometimes we're uh, maybe afraid to make those decisions because of the impact it will have on other people. Um, And the the beauty of it as well is if you kind of tap into that intuitive part of you that knows where it's going and you trust it, it always takes you to the place that you're meant to be. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, totally. So you know if you know if we're kind of like um you know an easy way if someone wanted to try and get out of their own way to allow their subconscious to tell them where they wanted to go and what they wanted to do what would you advise on that yeah um the a really really simple one i mean not so practical or easy in the lockdown, um, but a really simple one that I always say to people is go out into nature, go for a walk and listen, clear your mind, switch the phone off, no headphones, just listen to the sounds that are around you. Uh, maybe just, uh, you know, feel the sunshine or the wind on your face. Sometimes the, the best way to uh, to connect to that inner part of you is body consciousness. I'm a really big fan of this. When you bring yourself into awareness of how your physical body feels, is my chest, you know, my, is my breathing shallow? Then I'm probably an- anxious or nervous about something. Uh, you know, are my shoulders tense and tight? What am I anxious about? What am I angry about? Uh, why do I feel tense? You know, the more you check in with your physical body, the more signs it will give you as to what it is that you might be experiencing. So if you can't go out into nature, as a lot of people can't at the moment for various reasons. Mm obvious ones yeah (laughs) one thing that i've really been advocating for people lately is venus uh, the planet of beauty love and harmony is currently in gemini which is the sign all to do with words communication music beautiful things put nature sounds on guided visualization and meditations perfect Uh, anything that sounds like nature you know running water or the rain anything like that it's going to be brilliant right now to get you in touch with how you actually feel and soothing 
whatever frayed nerves you might have. Yeah. And the thing is also with not as much traffic on the roads, if, if you even if you open your window now, you can sort of like hear birds, especially in uh, um, in the morning or early evening. Yeah. When, when when they start coming out, it's like, oh, my God, it's, it's like a symphony sometimes. It absolutely is. I was thinking that just today, actually, that because I usually throw open the doors while I'm tapping away on my laptop. Or, um, and I was actually astounded at how much I could hear the birds chirping. So true. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like where everything's gone silent. It's like nature and birds and insects have kind of like, you can even hear the bees sort of like buzzing around a lot. You know, it's a lot clearer yeah. um, and that now, with, which is absolutely brilliant. So, yes, yeah, so you can open your windows, you know, even just letting some fresh air in. Absolutely. Uh, because cause the air's obviously a lot less polluted at the moment as well, so it's easier to breathe. Yeah. For sure. Do you know what I was thinking um, the other day? I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if we could have just like a, every maybe three to six months, we just have a week where there's no flights, no cars, no nothing. Oh, everybody yeah. should, you know, Just to give the earth a break. I think it would be super grateful. I know all of the animals, birds, trees, all of it is probably like, hang on a sec, what's going on? This is amazing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, Lisa just said, have you noticed how bright the stars are now? Yes. Oh, and they are really putting on a beautiful show at the moment. Yeah, they are. They are. When when it's not so cloud, when it's not so cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> We've been blessed here, actually. We've had quite a few really clear nights and it has been absolutely uh, phenomenal. And I think, yeah, because there's no pollution, you can really see, you know, the, the, the stars. Yeah, and Kalicia says, I watch these specific sets of birds every day. Beautiful. Yes, it's, it's like there are groups of birds, flocks of birds now, aren't there? Rather than individual, they're all sort of like seeming and a mixture of birds as well. You know, I was walking through um, uh, Central Park um, here in Dartford and it's like there, there were magpies and I think they were sparrows and some robins. And it was like they're just all mixing together. Yeah. It, was, it was it was like wow that's you know and the noise oh my god the noise was so loud yeah it's amazing um i love birds i think they're especially because if you watch them they do give you messages you know like i was used to marvel at you know that saying when your mum or your nan used to say a little bird told me <laughs> and sometimes when i watch them i'm like did they really because you know watching this i'm not sure <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's like they make they make too much noise but it does make you wonder maybe maybe you know birds can tell you yeah just from tiny little behaviors that they do you know like the way they ruffle their feathers or the certain song that they sing uh, i really believe that as well whenever you see a certain type of animal it brings you a message it always mm. brings you a message yeah always does and whilst we're chatting um i was just sort of like just playing with the cards and one decided it wanted to come out so there's no specific question or anything there but it's absolutely brilliant gates of triumph success expands your life and it's literally gates wide open wow allowing us to go out in That's in beautiful and that ties in with doing your passion yeah it really really does that's so beautiful uh, it's just I'm looking at it like mesmerized. That in itself could create like a whole uh, meditation in and of itself. It's beautiful. It is, yeah. That, that I, I love that. I love it when that when that card um, actually comes out. Oh, okay. So Lucy Barber says, "Hi, Lucy. Nature is taking back over." Yeah, most definitely is, which is wonderful. And Lisa says. Had two rats making out in my garden. weren't so impressed with that bit of nature. <laughs> I'm kind of like mind boggling at rats getting it on somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, I've heard of rabbits, you know, and you, and you see the um, the uh, advert on TV um, with the with the Duracell batteries, you know, where the family is sitting and you've got the elephants and it's kind of like, where's the batteries? Oh, hilarious. <laughs> rats, though. Mm. Yeah, no, that's an interesting. But then rats are sort of like multiplying at the moment, aren't they? So, yeah. 
yeah, I would, it kind of makes sense. I mean, well, I say that, I'm not entirely sure how, because obviously everything's ground to a halt, hasn't it? So, Well, I think it's, I think, I, I think from what I read the other day, it's not so much that there's more of them, it's just that we're now seeing them more because we're not going out, so there's no waste, no food being thrown on the streets um that you know um so so they're looking for food so we, we're, pro we're probably going to see them more same as foxes we're probably going to see a lot more foxes yeah um now the you, you know be, because the one there's not so many people talking about but it's where they're getting the food from mm -hmm. oh, that makes sense that makes total sense it does and lisa says i feel we'll be walking out in a new world yeah i agree um, I said this countless times to people, especially in readings recently. Um, whatever normal was before, don't expect to go back to that because it's not going to happen. Um, what we're heading towards now is a, a, a brand new era of life, a brand new way of living for all of us. Um, I believe that by the time we get to June, we're going to see, uh, you know, things really start to, to move forward again. Uh, one thing that's come up a lot in readings, whether it's personal readings for people or um, some of the, you know, the general stuff that I do, um, it looks like June is when we're going to see international flights resume again. Um, I feel like that's going to be something that takes place. Uh, one thing I have to say um, that I'm not, you know, I hope that I'm wrong, but I do feel like we will have a relapse of this situation mm. when the year is out. I feel like we're going to get back out. Everything will kind of start to move forward probably around September, October time. I think we might have another bout of you know, where we need to kind of stay grounded again. And then from there on, it will just be this case of, okay, we need to now find a way to live with this and like this. And that's why I really hope that we kind of factor in, you know, maybe every three months, every six months, just have a week off. No, yeah. planes, no planes, no nothing, you know, where everything stops to give the planet a break. Oh, yeah. Because some wonders so far. Exactly, and then I th and I, th I think I think we will do. Yeah, I'm kind of like, I was kind of like picking up on a, um, on June as well. That's kind of like been going about um, in my head. And I mean, um, last week um, I I took people ten years here, um, to see London in ten years time or wherever they were living, and the feedback I I got there's going to be a lot more electric cars and the air is going to be a lot clearer. Wow. Yeah, um, love it. We, 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 which is brilliant. So you know, we were still going to be here and existing, and and uh, and on Earth. Um, oh, and uh, Lisa says, "Freaky, Raphael." I was thinking of being insane. <laughs> we can't all be wrong. <laughs> exactly. And the thing is, because both you and I do future life progression, you know, and going into the future, we are still here. In a hundred, two hundred, a thousand, several thousand years, we are still here in some form or another. Absolutely, absolutely. And and Earth, and Earth is still here. So, um, if anyone's got any questions they want to ask um, uh, Raphael and myself, then now is the time to to do it. Um, and what Sir um, you're thinking about, if you do have any, have you got any? final words or thoughts of wisdom that you want to give everyone watching um yeah so obviously i've been saying to everyone use this time effectively uh, you know, be present, be in the moment for sure. We talked about self-empowerment and talked about the three A's as well. I think that's really important. Yeah, me. that's a very important one. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think as a final part in thought, one thing that I want to remind everybody is that if you are here, you are here for a reason. You have uh, a purpose, you have a destiny, whatever you want to call it. Use your your lifetime uh, effectively. And that's not by, you know, whatever standards you're supposed to be or anything like that. Just be your authentic self. That is enough for the world. And ultimately, by being that person, you give everybody else permission to be themselves as well. And I think that is probably one of the best things we can do for ourselves and for each other going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. It's, yeah, it's, it's just to be our, our, um, our authentic selves. 
without allowing our influencing from other people to come in and affect what we're doing or how we're doing it. Yeah. Absolutely. I think this is what we're seeing a lot of now. And I think going forward, that's one thing that I'm really excited to see. Uh, people are now saying to themselves, you know what, this has made me wake up. What do I really want to do? What really resonates with me? Where do I actually see myself five years from now? And it's a shame that it's taken something so restrictive to kind of wake so many people up but it's done its job. And I think now you're gonna see a lot of people saying, right, okay, if I'm gonna put my heart and soul into it, into this lifetime, I'm gonna make sure that what I do is, you know, is worth my time. Yeah, absolutely. And Lisa's actually, actually asked a really good question. And um, what do you guys feel will be the biggest shift and change that we will see when we emerge again? Ooh, um, do you wanna go first? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, mine mine is a sense of community um i think that is definitely going to stay we are going to be people are going to be a lot kinder to each other and actually start looking out for each other a lot more yeah. and i think the communities that have been started online i think we're going to do a lot more stuff online as well i think mm -hmm. those communities are going to are going to really stay there um, they're, they're not just here for the lockdown they are going to stay yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100% on that. And I think at some point, those online communities will spill out into the real world. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, local stuff set up. I think because, you know, long haul travel is about to get really expensive when it comes to flying and stuff. So I feel like that's going to make people really appreciate the place that they live in more. Um, mm. You know, a good example, when something's on your doorstep, you don't really check it out so often. Um, I think it's going to be the money. I think what we value in terms of finances is going to change. I think where we spend money, how we use money is all about to really go through a massive change. And I think the things that we once held up and revered are suddenly not going to matter anymore. I think that that's where we're going to see the biggest shift. Um, and I feel like that's going to start pretty soon with the new moon in Taurus because it's conjunct Uranus. So we've got a big change ahead of us. Um, sort of, I think that happens on the 23rd. Um, and I think that's going to set a lot of stuff into motion. Yeah, because because the planets are um, recently have been quite, quite powerful, haven't they, with their conjunctions and everything that have been coming up? Yeah, I mean, this whole situation that we're living now, um, really interesting about the symbolism of astrology. So Capricorn as a sign represents uh, power from the top down, you know, the structures of government and stuff. When you think about this whole situation, what was the first thing that they mentioned? As soon as they said it, I was like, Saturn and Pluto conjunct <laughs> right at the beginning of the year was a huge event that had everybody talking. And the first thing that they said when this whole lockdown situation came into force was to flatten the curb from the top down. As soon as I heard that, I was like, yeah, Saturn and Pluto conjuncting Capricorn, absolutely there. You know, the symbolism was insane. Um, we've had lots of stuff going on planetary wise. Uh, Saturn's just moved into Aquarius first time in the last 30 years. That's huge. Um, Saturn is restriction, you know, limitations. And then it's in the sign of Aquarius, the sign of people and humanity. Yeah. And we've got what? Social distancing. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. like, blows my mind how accurate this stuff is sometimes i know if you can change the narrative the only thing that i would say to take out of that socially we want to connect right and obviously we can't do it in person but try to use the term physical distancing instead of social distancing we want to mm. keep the social part because human beings are social by their very nature it's just yeah. physical distancing that we have to follow for obvious reasons yeah, but yeah, that should make sense. Physical rather rather than rather than social, um, those, uh, social things. Dan. Um, oh, and Lucy says I had a future life progression with Ray. I've now put into action. I'm moving at the end of June. This also puts into practice the simple way of life. Thank you, Ray. Oh, that's okay, Lucy. Wow, love it. I'm going to hook you up for a session of my own. <laughs> Yeah, and she's not going to be here when our play gets to um, put on again. Because because oh, because we're actually because um, Lucy actually volunteered me to direct my drama groups. So um, and, and one of my because she she wanted to have a go if she wanted to go for producing. So she actually said, um, 
pushed me, actually put words in, oh, mate, do you want to direct? <laughs> and of course, we were supposed to um, do the production in June, but that's been cancelled this and to October. And of course, Lucy's now moving away. So I'm now, I'm now producerless. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Um, and that, um, yeah, so you know, so, so things will were um, sort of like uh, continue, and uh, uh, was it Lisa says you can't make it up, and Lucy says sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's okay. So we we saw where you were going, and it is absolutely it's absolutely brilliant. So um, yeah, you you need you definitely you definitely need to go there, and um, and that in 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 the future. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and um, you've found it insightful and the words of wisdom that Raphael has given you will help you further on your journey. So Raphael, if people want to connect with you, how do they do it? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on YouTube. That's the biggest platform really that I'm uh, interacting with. Uh, my name is Radiant Reality. So it's spelled R-E-Y-D-I-A-N-T, uh, reality. Uh, you can find me there at any point, drop me a comment, drop me an email, maybe just comment on one of my posts um, and check it out, yeah. Yeah, and I have to say, guys, you know, do check out his um, channel because he puts up weekly, monthly um, readings on there. And even though they're for general, for the sign, you can actually um, pick up bits and pieces um, for it that resonate with you as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Lisa, it's lovely joining you guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Lisa. Yeah, thanks, everyone. And again, thank you everyone so much for watching this and joining in um, with, with the comments and saying hello. It's it's really good. And if we missed anyone who's been along, we will go through and we'll we'll just check. And of course, if you're watching this um, on the uh, B play, you know, still do leave um, comments or, or questions um, because Raphael will Raphael and I will still um, uh, uh, contact. And um, drop in and say hi. <laughs> and Lisa knows all the tricks to speak. <laughs> Love you, Lisa. <laughs> Not saying a word. Um, and yes, Debbie, um, I will put all the um, uh, Raphael's uh, uh, contact details um, on there. And Kalish says, thank you both. Discovered Ray through Raph's notification. Take care and say so. Yep, thank you, Kalisha. Yeah, and hopefully you'll, you'll come and watch the... Uh, watch the show again and Sita thank you both really enjoyed it and of course I think you've both met up now haven't you um, no. No. um uh, Lucy says thank you both and Debbie says your web please yep I'll put all the, I'll put all the details around for Raph on on the screen um on, in in the comments once the uh once the show's finished and Lisa White says love you too hum well, she has to. She's a stalker for you. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, everyone, if you have, have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and get clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free uh, 20 to 30 minute video call via Skype or Messenger so I can um, show you and tell you about what I do and how I can help you on your journey. And of course, my Angel Wings membership community is now open um, where you get the chance to grow um, with the Ascended Masters, Archangels and Oracle Cards to help you spread your wings and soar. And also, if you want to sign up to my weekly newsletter, you get a free guided relaxation meditation and some other free gifts. And of course, I'm running my retreat down in Glastonbury in September, which is now fully booked. But I'm also running one in October, so please check that out. And um, I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And I look forward to you joining me again, same place, same time next week, where my guest will be the lovely Anne Gersh. Wow. <laughs> I know. Awesome. I know. Love oh. Anne. It's brilliant. Oh, and, 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 and it's risen. Both, both Raph and I have tra uh, uh, trained under Anne, and, and when she starts, that's it. You, you, you know, the show, the show just runs itself. Um, and Lisa says, before we go, in my job description, <laughs> that might be the storm, Kim. <laughs> awesome. Guys, take care. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been lovely. Thank you all for watching and um, we'll see you again soon. Bye.